Hi, I'm Jim Ward of the Middle Country Public Library, and I'd like to welcome you to episode 25 in our History Bite series. Today, we will discuss the courageous life of Shirley Chisholm, who was the first black woman in Congress. Shirley Anita St. Hill Chisholm was born in Brooklyn, New York on November 30th, 1924, and was the oldest of four daughters to immigrant parents Charles St. Hill, a factory worker from Guyana, and Ruby Seal St. Hill, a seamstress from Barbados. For part of her childhood, Shirley St. Hill lived in Barbados on her maternal grandparents' farm, receiving a British education while her parents worked during the Great Depression to settle the family in Bedford-Stuyvesant. The most apparent indicator of her West Indies roots was the slight clipped British accent she retained throughout her life. Shirley also attended public schools in Brooklyn as well, attaining high marks. She graduated from Brooklyn Girls High in 1942. Accepted to Vassar and Oberlin Colleges, Shirley St. Hill attended Brooklyn, Brooklyn College on scholarship and graduated cum laude in 1946 with a Bachelor of Arts in Sociology. While at Brooklyn College, she won prizes on the debate team. She was urged by professors to consider a political career, but Shirley often said that she faced a, quote, double handicap for being both a woman and a black American. From 1946 to 1953, Chisholm worked as a nursery school teacher and then as the director of two daycare centers. She married Conrad Q. Chisholm, a private investigator, in 1949. Three years later, Shirley Chisholm earned an M.A. in early childhood education from Columbia University. She served as an educational consultant for New York City's Division of Daycare from 1959 to 1964. Ever aware of racial and gender inequality, she joined local chapters of the League of Women's Voters, the NAACP, the Urban League, and the Democratic Party Club in Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brooklyn. In 1964, Chisholm was elected to the New York State Legislature, becoming only the second black woman to serve in Albany. A court-ordered redistricting that carved a new Brooklyn congressional district out of Chisholm's Bedford-Stuyvesant neighborhood convinced Chisholm to run for Congress. The influential Democratic machine, headed by Stanley Steingut, declared its intention to send a black candidate from the new district to the House. In the primary, Chisholm faced three black challengers, Civil Court Judge Thomas R. Jones, a former district leader and New York Assemblyman, Dolly Robinson, a former district co-leader, and William C. Thompson, a well-financed state senator. Chisholm roamed the new district in a sound truck that pulled up outside housing projects while she announced, Ladies and gentlemen, this is fighting Shirley Chisholm coming through. Chisholm capitalized on her personal campaign style. Quote, I have a way of talking that does something to people, she noted. I have a theory about campaigning. You have to let them feel you. In the primary in mid-June 1968, Chisholm defeated Thompson, her nearest competitor, by about 800 votes in an election uh, characterized by light voter turnout. In the general election, Chisholm faced Republican James Farmer, one of the principal figures of the civil rights movement, a co-founder of the, co- of the Congress of Racial Equality, and an organizer of the Freedom Riders in the early 1960s. The two candidates held sim- similar positions on housing, employment, and education issues, and both opposed the Vietnam War. Chisholm portrayed Farmer as an outsider, who who lived in Manhattan and used her fluent Spanish to appeal to the growing Hispanic population in the Bedford-Stuyvesant neighborhood. At this time, members of the Puerto Rican community accounted for 20% of the district vote. The deciding factor, however, was the district's overwhelming liberal tilt. More than 80% of the voters were registered Democrats. Chisholm won the general election by a resounding 67% of the vote. Chisholm's freshman class included two black Americans of future prominence, Louis Stokes of Ohio and William Lacey Clay Sr. of Missouri, and boosted the number of black Americans in the House from six to nine, the largest total up to that time. Chisholm was the only new woman to enter Congress in 1969. 
In Congress, Fighting Shirley introduced more than 50 pieces of legislation and championed racial and gender equality, the plight of the poor, and ending the Vietnam War. However, Chisholm's welcome in the House was not warm due to her refusal to abide by long-standing House expectations for first-term members to fly under the radar. I have no intention of just sitting quietly and observing, she said. I intend to focus on the nation's problems. She did just that, lashing out against the Vietnam War in her first floor speech on March 26, 1969. Chisholm vowed to vote against any defense appropriations bill, quote, until the time comes when our values and priorities have been turned right side up again, end quote. During her, during her time in Congress, Chisholm served on various committees such as Agriculture, Education and Labor, and Organization Study and Review. In 1972, Chisholm sought the Democratic presidential nomination and became the first woman and black American to contend for it. She stated that none of the other candidates represented the interests of black and minority voters and the inner inner city poor. She was blocked from participating in televised primary debates and after taking legal action was permitted to make just one speech. Still, students, women, and minorities followed the Chisholm Trail. She entered 12 primaries and garnered 152 of the delegates' votes, just 10% of the total. Despite an underfinanced campaign and contentiousness from the predominantly male Congressional Black Caucus. She was a co founder of the National Women's Political Caucus in 1971 and in 1977 became the first black woman and second woman ever to serve on the powerful House Rules Committee. That year, she married her second husband, Arthur Hardwick Jr., a New York State legislator. A 1974 Gallup poll listed her as one of the top 10 most admired women in America, ahead of Jackie Kennedy Onassis and Coretta Scott King, and tied with Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi for sixth place. Chisholm retired from Congress in 1983 and co-founded the National Political Congress of Black Women. In 1991, she moved to Florida and later declined the nomination to become U.S. Ambassador to Jamaica due to health issues. Chisholm passed away on January 1, 2005, after suffering several strokes. Of her legacy, Chisholm said, I want to be remembered as a woman who dared to be a catalyst of change. I'd like to thank you all for joining us for today's episode. If you enjoyed it, click like, and if you watched on YouTube, hit subscribe. Thanks so much, and we'll see you all next time.